it's going to work in conjunction with our next lesson, Section 8.3. And we're going to talk about installment loans, what they're used for, and how we can calculate our monthly payments on those. So what are installment loans? Well, it's money that you borrow up front to repay uh, if you want to make a large purchase. So maybe you're using that loan for education, student loans. Maybe you're using that loan to buy a car. Maybe you're trying to buy new furniture for your home and you need a loan to help you pay for that. Maybe your furnace went in your home and you don't have enough cash flow in your emergency fund, so you have to purchase a new furnace. So it helps you purchase a large amount that when you don't necessarily have that money on hand. So things that we need to know. So we get that large amount of money, but we pay that money back in installment payments. So typically those are monthly, but you could work something else out that you're paying twice a month or bi-monthly depending on who your lender is. With each payment, you'll reduce the loan balance, but you also have more interest payments with each payment. The longer you take that loan out for the more interest you're going to have to pay back. Using installment loans can help your credit if you are a good borrower and within good standing that you make monthly payments and you make them on time that will help raise your credit score. Okay so our terminology that we need to talk about first is the amount financed. So that is the portion of the cash price owed after making the down payment. Now most, not all, but most installment loans will require some kind of down payment. So that's the portion of the loan that you're going to pay out of pocket. So typically that's a percentage, maybe 10% or 20% or whatever extra cash you have to put on that loan at its origination. Then we are going to look at that installment loan, and that's the loan you repay in equal payments over a specified period of time. So how do we calculate that down payment? So our down payment comes off of the total cash price. So for an example, if you're buying a new furnace and that new furnace costs $2,000 and you want to put $200 down, the amount that you're going to finance is $2,000 minus $200, and that means that you're going to need to borrow $1,800. That's the amount that you finance. You can also calculate the down payment by figuring out what percentage. So at $200 for a $2,000 loan, that means that we put 10% down. So our cash price, if I take 2,000 times 10%, that's going to give me $200, and that's our down payment. So are the, those are the formulas we're going to use for this part of the lesson. When we talk about 8.3, we're going to talk about how to calculate what our monthly payments will be. All right, our first um, example, LaVon is buying a new truck. The purchase price of the truck is $38,750. He has saved $1,500 as the down payment. How much will he need to finance? So the amount financed is a simple calculation in this problem. So he's simply going to take the amount of money for the total purchase price of the truck minus his $1,500 down payment. That makes his amount financed be calculated at $37,250. Now that amount financed, when we talk about how to find that monthly payment, becomes the principal of what we're borrowing from the bank. All right, moving on to example two, Nat Natalia is purchasing a new treadmill on an installment payment plan. The purchase price is $12.99 for the treadmill. She plans to make a 15% down payment. What is the total amount she will need to finance? Well, first of all, in this one, we're not given the straight down payment. So we're going to calculate that with the percentage. 
So the cost of the treadmill is $1,299 and she's going to put 15% down. That's going to make her down payment be $194.85. Now to calculate the amount that she has to finance from the bank, we'll start back with that $1,299 and we'll deduct her down payment of $194.85 and that will give us an amount that she needs to finance at $1,104.15. So again, that amount finance becomes our principal amount that we have to take at the bank. All right, so we're gonna utilize this in our next lesson also to calculate what that monthly installment fee will be. I hope you all have a great day.